Hey, this is James Horan, and you're listening to the Vacumina Network. Keep it right here. Internet. This is the Vacuuminator and War 077 coming at you with a episode of a brand new series here on the Vacuumina Network that we're calling Topic Time. So, uh, yes. Basically, um, since this is the first episode, I better explain why the heck this is happening. Um, I had an idea a while back to just have a general show for the network just... Um, just we think of a topic and then we just go with that for an hour and just be, you know, we talk about whatever the heck we want, whenever the heck we want and have no set schedule and just be our generic topic show and I've just been waiting for the right topic to come up and the topic we're doing tonight um, seemed to be it so here we are and uh of course, I'm pretty sure people are wondering what we're talking about, unless they've read the title of the video, which they probably have. Uh, we're talking about the fact that Toonami is back! Insert demeaning name for a woman here. Yeah, but uh, I'm, I'm quite excited about this, and uh, I have to say, I really enjoyed the first night of it. What did you think, Laura? Uh, I enjoyed the new shows. Um, kind of pissed that they're just doing a whole bunch of... Uh, we're going to give you Bleach, we're going to give you Ghost in the Show, we're going to give you Cowboy View Up, and we're going to give you Full Metal Alchemist. So, it's kind of, kind of pissed about those two, but, I mean, Dead Man Wonderland and, uh, and, uh, Cash and Sins were pretty good. I mean, but it sucks because they're only 24 episode series each, so it's, they're going to be short-lived, a new series, but I'm, I'm hoping that we're going to get some new things because, uh, some companies have gotten rights to good shows, I just found out. So we might see some good dubs soon. Yeah, it is sad that we're only really getting two new shows besides um, what was already being shown on Adult Swim. But, I, but pretty much the way that works, as far as I know, is um, they were given very little money. So they were only able to buy, like, two very cheap cheap shows to put on and um, they only had enough money to make I think the number was like three renders of the absolution eight renders of Tom and none of Sarah that's what I heard too but I, I, I was kind of it was kind of funny that um, as of last as of Saturday night it was trending again with Tsunami oh yeah they, um, they got like every show um, trending as well as several times Toonami, the, the, the hashtag Toonami itself started trending, which was awesome. But anyways, I'm, I'm really hoping that um, the, the ratings will be consistently high so Cartoon Network will give them a bigger budget because the thing is I, the only thing that's going to um, get them a bigger budget than what they've been given is if um, we, we keep having ratings as high or just slightly below what there was the first night because um, I've said this many times um, already but I like shows on Cartoon Network but I do not like Cartoon Network itself and that's because they've made it blatantly obvious in recent years that they hate action cartoons. Like, unless it's something like Adventure Time, they they're not gonna really do too good promoting it. They're just going to put it on air and wait for it to drop low enough in views for them to be able to justify canceling it. Well, my whole thing is I'm sorry I'm a little tired, guys, but um, my whole thing is uh, I know a lot of diehard tsunami fans have already been tweeting about it. Just watch it. They're gonna watch it every Saturday night, even if it's even if it's a complete and utter crap, for, except for Dead Man Wonderland and Cashin, which I'm really late in both of those, by the way, um, they're still going to watch it. We're going to just kind of 
be diehards for the night, for the time being until we start getting shows. Like I've heard in the work rumors uh, that we might be getting Tiger and Bunny. I know that we might be getting a record seven AO because uh, Funimation has got the rights to it, and uh, basically uh, they have Funimation has got the rights to it to dub it in America. And um, I know that uh, what is it uh, that what is the company called that Williamsburg. Uh, Williams, William Street. Sorry, ha- have a long-running relationship with Funimation Entertainment, so we might be seeing our record seven AO. Um, and that, that's pretty much it as of right now that I know. Now, see, I don't, I don't hate the fact that they're re-airing shows that they already have the rights to, like Bleach and Full El- Full Metal Alchemist and all that. Because, um, the thing is, I'm actually not that big of an anime guy. I'm someone who, I've only seen maybe, like, five series, and I've watched them, and I've watched them all the way through, and I was like, yay, anime. And I've seen all, and I've seen most of the Miyazaki films, too, but other than that, I'm not a real big anime guy, so for me, either... Either way, if it's a rerun of a show or if it, if it's airing brand new on Tanami, it's a sh- um, it's a new experience for me. But I can get why people who who are anime friend fans are frustrated by that. Well, I'm liking right now because of Dead Man Wonderland that they're going the ballsy route too. It's Dead Man Wonderland. It was straight up just nothing but gore and graphic language and stuff like that. So they're they're showing basically now that we don't give a shit. We're going to air the shit that we, we weren't allowed to air when it was on the Cartoon Network stop, time, timeline. We're going to air it in the Adult Swim time because you're you're grown up with it, and we know what you want now. And we, we know that you're a more mature audience. I mean, yeah, if a kid sees <laughs> Dead Man Wonderland, they, they're going to be a little bit traumatized, you know. But it's it's say, it's saying that now we can they can get a lot better animes on here than what they've had in the past. I mean, yes, I know I'm going to get a lot of shit for saying... You know, like, generic, like, uh, DBG, DBZ, sorry, and then stuff like that. But, I mean, those were past, and now they've kind of, like, become old and stale. Even though they're great, they were great when they were airing, but they're, they're just, for me, that's kind of, like, in the, in the section of stale. I want to see new things. I want to see, like, more gritty things. Uh, like, I know uh, Record 7 AO, if they get it, a hold of it, it's not going to be gritty, because it's not a gritty series, norm- series normally. But, like, as we've seen, we've got Cash and Sin, which is a very depressing series, I know. A lot a lot of spoilers, I don't want to say. And then you see Dead Man Wonderland, which is just nonstop, like, death every 30 seconds, you know? Dead Man Wonderland definitely was a um, very crazy kind of show. I mean, I definitely... I knew we were going to get some more adult shows this time around because... Um, whereas the original Toonami aired, um, what was it, at, 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 during, like, the afternoon on Saturdays, now it's airing at, like, midnight to 5 a.m., well, so... It's it airing at, like, 7 o'clock to probably about the end of Cartoon Network's programming block, which ends probably around, oh, back then probably would end around, right around 11, so it would probably start about 7 and end at about 11, and now it's because it's, like, what, 8 o'clock now is when... Parts ever goes off and the adult swim starts running. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I'm excited what what I saw this week. I well, not excited for most of the stuff because they're re- they're rerunning, they're baiting, basically being a dead horse right now with some of the programming they've got. They basically Ghost in the Shell, uh, Bleach is because a lot of if you're an anime buff, you know Bleach is over. Cowboy Bebop, I, I can't I can't say I, I don't like the Cowboy Bebops on there because I love Cowboy Bebop. I've seen, I've, I've, I can watch it m- many times and not get bored with it. But it's like, but that's just because it's a short-lived series. It was a short-lived series. I like the series that don't go on forever, you know? Yeah, um, like Naruto. That went, that's, isn't that's, Naruto still going? It's in the 10th year. Wow, that's, that's insane. Bleach... Kind of, I, I was kind of sad that it ended. Well, at least the anime verse ended, not the manga. But 
You know, same thing with Cashier and Sins. Cashier and Sins is only 24 episodes, but the manga is ongoing. It just has not stopped. Yeah, um, and I guess since we're uh, pretty much um, just talking about the actual shows now, um, do you want to go through what actually aired and sort of give your opinions on the series overall and the episode that was aired for the first night? Okay. So, uh, I'll introduce, because uh, I'm a little bit more of the anime buff than out of us two. Yeah. So I'll try to introduce. So, the first episode was, uh, the first thing that aired the night was Bleach. It was during the Zanpakuto arc. So, it's, for new newbies coming to Dunami and not knowing what Bleach is, that's a very bad spot because that's a lot further in the series. But it's also just a meaningless arc. Uh, that episode kind of was the very tail end of the arc. Not the tail end, actually was the legit end of the arc. So it was just kind of like not good. But I know what they were doing is it because that was actually the following episode for the lap, the week before uh, that. So they kind of had to do it like that. But it's just kind of sad for newbies to come into that. Um, so what did you think about it, Vivek? Well, I know... Whoa, what was that huge static burst? Um... I don't know. Anyways, um, Bleach is one of those shows where I've, I, uh, I'm someone who I have very little time to watch TV unless it's actually airing on TV and I can say it's gonna be, it's gonna be live on the TV this time, I'm, I'm, this time of day, I'm going to make an actual effort to get off my computer and go watch it. If it's like a series that's already done or anything like that. I just don't have time to watch it. So I, I've i known the basic premise of Bleach for a very long time, and I've wanted to watch it for a very long time. So um, this was a good experience for me. I, I enjoyed it, but I definitely didn't like that it just dropped me right in the last episode of an arc because I knew it was going to, so I went in... So I, like, read up on the past couple episodes via wiki, but I was still kind of upset by that. But overall, I did enjoy it. See, and I'm on the other end of the spectrum just because I'm not a Bleach fan. I used to be when it first it started airing, but now I'm kind of like, I, I can't enjoy it anymore. I haven't, I haven't watched enough of it to know if I'm a fan or not. All I know is I like the initial premise. Okay, and then our second episode, uh, not episode, our second show of the night was Dead Man Wonderland. Uh, really great show. I believe and this is its first time ever airing in the U.S. Um, I'm pretty sure that's true. I know Cash and aired a long time ago, but um, but that was on the Anime Network. So this is the first something on a uh, not Cash and sorry, I'm talking about that. I'm supposed to be talking about Dead Man. Um. But it was it was very gritty. It was very ballsy to put on there. Um, I'm glad they kind of did censor a lot of the crap out. Uh, even though, you know, I don't I don't really care. I'm 20 years old. I don't need. To, I don't really. It doesn't really matter. Subject matter like that doesn't really apply to me. But it kind of could apply to certain people who have the right uh, that kind of mindset. But I mean, it was a good series. It, uh, <laughs> first 10 seconds, just nothing but violence. You know, it was kind. Of, it was kind of upsetting because you get introduced to two characters and they're, they're killed off instantly. But on the other hand of the spectrum, it, it's, it's it's showing that Toonami's gotten balls now. They're 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 going full out. You know. Yeah, I I really enjoyed this. Um, it, it's very much the kind of anime that I'm into, at least from what I've watched, and uh, I just. I think it's a very interesting premise, and um, uh, the fact that this kid's in a prison that's actually a theme park, that was like, wow. I, I thought the name, I didn't even make the connection of Dead Man Wonderland would be like the name for a theme park. I just thought like, oh, it's going to be a show about a kid who can talk to ghosts or something like that. Well. Prior to the show starting, I had read down a little bit of reading, and I had known that it was a theme park that they sent convicts to to try to get rid of their death sentence, except everybody in, in the Dead Man Wonderland, in the theme park, actually, the, all the inmates there there are on death row. They are not going to 
basically they're not supposed to make it. Yeah, and the way the whole death row thing works is there's those collars, and it's like they have to eat this special kind of candy every... What was it? It's, 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 you're supposed to eat it every eight hours. It resets your collar to a uh, previous eight hours. But, uh... I like how the whole the whole episode is just this kid being framed for something that he did not do. Um... He was in the class of uh, this person called the Red Man, which I know a secret about, but a lot of you, if you've watched Dead Man Wonderland, you know the secret about the Red Man. But he shows up and then has instantly killed everybody but Gantana. Uh, I think that's it. I know it's Ganta. Has killed everybody but Ganta, and Ganta is put on trial for the actions of the Red Man. The Red Man, uh, uh, he is put on trial. Everybody tries, actually in the trial are trying to kill him. He is sentenced to. Uh, death. Our capital punishment is what they say, but um, he tries to. Please I, him. I assume in Japan, capital punishment means like death. Yeah, it's death. Um, he uh, he pleads that he is in, innocent, but uh, if someone has shown otherwise, as an imposter has taken his place and said that he has killed everybody, who looks extremely a lot like Antana or Ganta. Sorry if I pronounced his name wrong. It just felt weird. Yeah, that was like that was the scene where everybody went, "Whoa, this show has balls!" Because that imposter, um, after he had basically admitted it, he was like, "I can't believe they all don't, uh, they they are falling for me saying, saying I didn't do it. Those stupid bleeping bleep 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 bleeps. It was yeah. that was wow. Just 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 his how his speech." pattern there was, he was being, uh, the imposter was ignorant, he was, uh, he was just, it was perfect, it was a good, it's a good, it's a good first show, uh, the new, uh, of the new shows, it was good. Yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed it, and of course a lot of questions in the episode, where did that grow, and, um, and I, I haven't read up on the series whatsoever, so... No spoilers, please, anime fans. Um, face, but I, a lot of questions brought up. Where did that um, girl in white come from? Um, how? Who is the the red man? How, um, and how the heck did the kid save his life? It's like it, it looked like he had like Dragon Ball Z powers or something there for a second. Well, if you, if you noticed it, it was the same power as the red man. Oh. I, I thought that I thought they looked familiar. That's why I said Dragon Ball Z powers. He had the same powers as the Red Man, basically. Uh, but his his blood was a- activated his powers. It looked like. Ah, uh, well, I'm really interested to see where the series goes from here. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. Okay, next was Casher and Sins. Casher and Sins is actually. A- Originally, an anime called I think it was it's Cashin. It was originally from the 1970s. This is more of an updated series. There was also a live action movie of Cashin, but uh, I have not seen it yet. But the premise is is Cashin has has murdered this uh, other robot named Luna. Luna apparently has uh, after he had murdered her. He does not know that he uh, why he has done it. He's just murdered her. After he has done it, the world is starting to decay and just everybody's starting to die. Um, basically, what has hap- what happens after that is Cashern is now being hunted down by other robots in the, this universe. Um, and basically, the, the, what they are trying to do is they're trying to consume Cashern. For if you consume Cashern, you are supposed to save the world and stop all this d- decay. But um, Cashier is a little bit too strong for a lot of them. I, I thought this was very um, interesting. It was a very definitely dark, moody series. It almost felt like an episode of Batman the Animated Series in that regard, just the whole mood of it. And I really like that because um, while I have, well, I'm not someone who's had the ability to watch every episode. I've watched a lot of Batman the animated series, and that's one of my favorite shows of all time. And um, sort of the whole thing of of I didn't realize um, um, 
that little, like, it didn't hit me that the little girl was a robot, um, that, that Kasher ha- talks to in that dream sequence in the episode or whatever it was. Okay. You know, that was what was really happening. The dream sequence was, was with Luna and basic. Not a lot of it was dream sequence. A lot of it was just real life, but it was, it was meant to feel like you're not supposed to know what's going on. Well, I didn't know what was supposed to go, what was supposed to be going on, so did its job. Um, but yeah, that moment where it was, where they almost killed off that little girl, that scared the crap out of me because I was like, whoa, swearing is one thing, but almost killing off that little girl just jarred me because when it's that late in the night, I'm just sort of, I'm sort of out of it unless I'm writing or something so I was just sort of sitting there gazing at the TV and then I noticed oh my gosh they're about to kill off this little girl whoa kind of a moment but overall I really like the episode and I'm looking forward to see where it goes in the future uh, next was Pokemon Alchemist Brotherhood which I did not watch I don't care for Pokemon Alchemist even though it's a Bones production I'm a really big Bones fan I just could not bring myself to watch it. Uh, never, I have never liked it. Ah, uh, well, um, this was um, episode seven of the series, and I only know that because it's one of those shows that says episode seven and then the actual title of the episode. So I, so I was. Um, for episode seven of the series, I thought it was very interesting. Um, Film Full Metal Alchemist is um, another show that I know the basic premise of and have been planning to watch for a very long time. Um, basically, the premise is there are these two who brothers who their mother was an alchemist, and um, the older bro- and their mother died. Um, at during like the first episode, and the older brother, um, to t- t- try to come up with a post, um, like some way of through alchemy. I'm not an expert on alchemy, so I don't really know what that would be. Um, he tried to come up with a spell to bring his mother back to life, and instead it backfired and. Um, trapped his younger brother's soul in this suit of armor, and so now it's just basically them working for the government as alchemists, and at the same time, trying to find a way to um, undo the spell that was cast on his little brother. Um, And this episode I enjoyed quite a bit. It wasn't it wasn't horrible, but I it wasn't it was it wasn't the best thing in the world was what I just meant to say, but it was also very good and I enjoyed watching it. I think Ghost in the Shell came next, wasn't it? This was uh, an episode of Ghost in the Shell. I think second gig. I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure if it was standalone or second gig, but uh, it was it was standalone complex second gig. So basically, uh, this episode was about the I think. I think her name is. Uh, I used to watch this series a lot, um, but it's, it's about her. Uh, the main character, uh, I just call her Major. It's about her meeting this child who wants to be a full body, uh, have a full body uh, prosthetic like she does. Um, but you know, I didn't really. I was at this point in the night. I was I was probably playing uh, Halo more than I was uh, watching uh, Tsunami. I was just trying to keep it on my TV to get the so I get the ratings up. Yeah, um, I've, I've seen the film Ghost in the Shell, but I never knew there was a series until, um, it was announced that Tsunami was coming back and the lineup was released and all that. So, I was very interested to watch this, and, um, I, I really liked this episode, um, the... It was it was very interesting seeing her meet this kid who's basically the leader of this street gang and who's gotten himself into a lot of trouble and she has to 
help him out, and she finds out that there was this member of a street gang who had a full body prosthetic, and he he wants to be just like him, including having a full body prosthetic, and the whole dynamic between the two of them was very interesting, and I was half thinking throughout the entire episode, he was going to be, she was going to, like, um, take him in and make him, like, her sidekick or something throughout the whole thing, but I'm, but I kind of also knew that wouldn't happen because it's Ghost in the Shell. Um, but, yeah, this was a really good episode, and I, I, I liked it. Yeah, I, I just have a lot of the shows after that, I kind of stopped. I watched Cowboy Beef Up because I'm faithful to that show, series. I've always loved it. Um, but after that, we had a, I think it might have been Cowboy Beef Up. Yeah, yeah, it was Cowboy Bebop, and then that was the last show before they just flipped the switch. But, um, yeah, that, this episode of Cowboy Bebop was the, uh, uh, the Faye Valentine episode, um, basically trying to sh- show what had happened to her, um, where, uh, um, what had happened to her, why she does not remember who she is. And it's a really sad episode because, uh, it's a really s- it's, it's just a really sad um, episode. I mean, Faye just not knowing who she is. Even, it's like, well, like, um, and then you have Spike, Jack, you know, Jet, sorry, not Jack, yeah. and then Ed all know who they are. It's just, it's kind of sad. It's like, she's a member of the uh, Bebop crew and she doesn't know who she is. But it, it, it just kind of gets, it more, like, steadily just grows more and more sad. How... She fell in love with this guy, uh, uh, and then he winds up killing, him, k- uh, trying to kill, uh, kill himself. From, but you know, at the very end of the episode, he's alive. Um, but he tries doing that for her, and like, try, and gives her all his debt. So she's even more in debt than she was before, owing three hundred million. I think it's three million oolongs, or three hundred million. But it's it, it, it's extremely, extremely sad because she's also culture shocked. She's been in cryogenically frozen for 50 years. So. It's just kind of like, you know, it's just a really sad episode. Yeah, um, Cowboy Bebop is one of the few anime, um, series I've actually watched. And so, I was excited to see this episode again. It's one of my, um, one of my favorite things to watch. And, and, um, well, the show is one of my favorite things to watch. Uh, this episode I do like, but it's, it's primarily for the thing of just the dynamic between her and, um, the, the con man and at the end, and where they're just crack, cracking jokes at each other back and forth of, like, you left me with dead... And so now I'm just going to turn you in and all that kind of stuff. That I really like that. Um, but yeah, it was it was a good way to end off the first night of Tsunami with um, Cowboy Bebop, uh, probably one of which is considered to be one of the best animes of all time. And, and I I I enjoyed it. I would have loved if they could switch out uh, Ghost in the Shell for Big O and Durabara Rock for uh, Durabara Rock for Full Metal Alchemist. I mean, I would love those two a little bit more. I know a lot of people don't like it. Um, like, it's a very minority sort of fandom. But I was I was kind of hoping to, um, when it was announced it was coming back before they announced the lineup. I was kind of hoping for Naruto in the back of my head because that's that's one of the animes I watch and I really enjoy it. I'm I'm one of, and I fully admit it's a guilty pleasure because I know a lot of people don't like it and just think it's a Dragon Ball Z ripoff, which it's not. Well, the first thing is I think you're more into the shonen style anime. And that's what it is. It's a shonen. But <laughs> I kind of I kind of found out that oh, shonens go a lot more wide than what you think. 
because uh, I also found out last night that the demographic for Shonen also includes Dead Man Wonderland. Yeah, um, yeah, Dead Man Wonderland, jeez, what a show. Yeah. I I've watched it five or six times now. Oh, you DVR'd it? Yep, DVR'd that, I DVR'd the whole night. Oh, well, that's another thing, too, um, for our listeners who, um, may be thinking, like, man, I can't watch Toonami every week at, like, midnight to five, um, Basically, um, I found out this cool little fun fact the other day. If you DVR a show, it will still count as a rating. It will still go into the ratings that you watched it. Which, no, that's not. Actually, it's sending me to the uh, channel and, and record it uh, as it's playing on the uh, channel. So yeah. I mean, mm. I'm, I'm really excited for the books coming later. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm looking more forward to the future instead of looking towards what's now. But. Yes, Cartoon Network, give them more money so they can put more new shows on there. I know. As I've heard so far, DBZ cannot come back because DBZ is being stranglehold. Uh, has a, it's got it. What, not DBZ. Nickelodeon has a stranglehold on Dragon Ball Z Kai. So, it's going to be too hard for Cartoon Network to get a hold of that off of them. So, we'll probably never see DBZ except for that one night that they had it. Gundam? I've heard rumors that we might be seeing Gundam Age and or Unicorn, which would be pretty cool. Um, I've also heard rumors about we might just see more anime that people like. I know... I've really heard rumors, and I'm really excited about this. If uh, what happens is after Tiger Money that uh, movie airs in America, we might see it on Adult Swim uh, and the Tsunami Block. If we're lucky, that's that's always good. Yeah, I I've heard plenty of rumors about what could be on. Um, the thing is, I'm just not a big anime fan, so I know very little series. The only thing I can say I would hope would be on um, is I hope they eventually get the rights to show Trigun, because that's another show I've been interested in watching for a long time. Well, they've had Trigun for a time, but it's just kind of... They've kind of looked... It's, it's... Yeah, but... Uh, I don't know, there's just not much else to say. I'm, I'm just giddy and happy that Tsunami's back, because it's one of those things that I watched it when I... I I came into it well, where I was still young enough that I can barely remember it, but I, I remember it being like something I would look forward to all week because um, when it was originally airing, and I'm one of the people who likes Teen Titans, I know a lot of people don't like it, but when 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 Teen Titans was originally airing new episodes, it was on Toonami. And that used to be why I would always watch it. Um, I used to watch it uh, to me because it came out when I was probably around. Uh, what? I was probably about... I don't know how old it was. But I had watched it until it ended in 2008. No. Yeah, but... I guess we're just getting to the point where we're just grasping for things to talk about, but... Overall, uh, really cool that Tsunami's back. I hope they get more money so we can get better shows and more renders of Tom doing stuff and hopefully see um, Sarah come back because she was a big part of the show and it's kind of sad that they didn't bring her back. Well, I think it's, it's all about trying to get her voice actors back. That's why I think, um, that's why I believe, that's why I think Tsunami is having trouble. Ah. Uh, See, I'm just not plugged in enough to know. I just, I just heard they didn't have the money to make renders of her. I didn't think it was the fact of being able to get, get her voice actress back. But might is possibly the reason why they didn't, she was not in it. But I can do a little background check. So let me try that first. They're not talking about anything right as of right now, but it looks like that we might. See more pretty soon. Alright. Well, 
Um, we're we're coming up on time here, and we're getting we're we're sort of running out of stuff to talk about. So, uh, Ward, do you have any other final thoughts about um, Janami being back? Um, I can say right now that it it was honestly some of it was good and some of it was bad, but I'm going to keep watching and being uh, Tsunami faithful just because. I want to see it go further than it was. I mean, it started its run in 1997, ended its run in, uh, ended its first run in, uh, 2008, with pretty much crap shows in 2008, and now we got a full anime lineup instead of having, like, oh, Mega Man and Stormhawks, even though, first off, Stormhawks was a Canadian series, and Mega Man was, uh, basically a series that had turned into American. But we're seeing stuff like Bleach, Cash and Sins, Cowboy Bebop, Dead Man, one of the full metal alchemists and goes to the shell. We can, it's, there's no limit on where we can reach if we could put our support. So, uh, in the straight words of Steve Bloom, hashtag every Twitter with Toonami and be faithful. Yeah, um, I'm super, super excited that um, it's back and Steve Bloom is just an amazing guy. I've talked, I've talked back and forth with him a couple times on Twitter about this, and um, he, he seems like I don't want to speak for him, but it it seems that he he's very much excited and all for it, and just yeah, let's do this thing, kind of a guy. And I really like that. That it's not just that there's actual passion behind it. It's not just a job to him and the people at Cartoon Network. I'm kind of, I'm kind of I hope Mike Lazo realizes that he, how much money, he did, if he keeps it up, how much money he's going to get for this, this thing, because us, us Toonami faithful, we are, we are the ones that are going to kick this thing in the pants and make it bigger than it's ever been. Yeah, if we hadn't been, if we hadn't, um, that's actually the whole reason it came back was it was just that thing on April Fool's Day and then everyone started tweeting bring back hashtag bring back Toonami like non-stop for uh, almost a month and there were even accounts um, created on sites such as Facebook, Twitter or on YouTube just saying just saying that were titled bring back Toonami and it was it was crazy it almost reminds me of how big the movement was to stop SOPA and just how how many people have joined in on this thing and it, it really makes me proud to be a part of this generation it's one of the few moments where I can sit back and go you know yeah. I, I, I am glad that I was born or born or when I was born we may have a shitty economy but damn it we brought back Tsunami you gotta remember this, we are the driving force behind this. We have to spread the word. We have to be the Toonami faithful, as uh, as Steve Bloom says through Tom. We we are the ones that are going to make this big. We're not. We just can't sit down. You know, we don't roll over and die, people. Spread the yeah. word. Yeah, definitely. So I think that's going to do it for this episode of Topic Time. Um. There are several ways you can get back. You can get in contact with us and leave feedback for the show. Oh, you can go. You can um, check out our unofficial official site, thevacuumandnetwork.tumblr.com. You can subscribe to us here on YouTube, YouTube.com/user/thevacuumandnetwork. I am the vacuuminator on YouTube. Um, what's your name, more? I am James M36 on YouTube. Um, you can you can follow us on Twitter at the vacuum and net at um, vacuuminator and I believe your um, Twitter is at war zero seven seven right? Yes, it is. And uh, yeah, guys, that's pretty much going to do it for this episode. So until next time, this is the vacuuminator and war saying stay gold until the next episode.